How come adequate sleep slash wellness practice can be so difficult for students to achieve? For university students, you're juggling both your academic life and you know, academic performance with, along with maintaining a social life and you know, having fun. A lot of times this is particularly difficult because we don't have enough time in the day. And what we end up doing is sacrificing time we would get, get put towards sleep. Um, and or we may not prioritize sleep as a result. Another like major factor I would think that contributes to this is just generally stress. So this could be either like academic stress from taking finals or doing long courses, or also you know stress in your own like personal or social life. Another form of stress that a lot of people, that university students in particular may be facing is it may be their first time living away from home or living uh, in a different country. So you don't necessarily have that same support network you normally do. It's kind of like this vicious cycle where typically if you don't, if you're really stressed out during the day, you may experience worse sleep that night, which means that you might experience more stress the next day because you're tired or fatigued, which may result to uh, like poor sleep the subsequent night. So it kind of like, so it kind of goes around. These things are all interconnected. So for example, during exam season, students are experiencing higher amounts of stress and are probably spending more time studying or even cramming uh, late into the night to, you know, make, to do well on these exams. Um, in addition to that, you know, exams being at the end of the term, a lot of your friends may be leaving or going home. So you want to kind of see them right before, you want to catch them right before they leave. And while, you know, some people may be able to balance these out or be lucky and have like, say, they're be done with finals and then, you know, go hang out with friends. Sometimes not everyone has that luxury. So again, people typically sacrifice time they would put towards like sleeping to uh, meet these other kind of demands. This is called social jet lag, which is like a research term, which basically means that, you know, you sleep differently during the weekdays versus the weekend because you're trying to maintain these different um, uh, aspects of your life, like academically, but also socially. So I think part of maintaining good sleep hygiene during university uh, partially involves just simply acknowledging that you may not have enough time to do everything you would want to do and still be able to get enough sleep. So this can mean being more like selective in terms of how you spend the, your time or in terms of like planning ahead. So, you know, you can budget time to ensure that you're able to do things that you would like to do, but also getting enough sleep. How might the quality of sleep affect academic performance? Do you have any specific experiences you could share where sleep quality has affected academics either positively or negatively? Generally, the consensus is that people who get less or poor quality of sleep uh, often are related to get ha lower academic performance. And, you know, there's like a number of reasons to why poor sleep relates to worse academic performance, such as, you know, when you're sleep deprived, it's hard, it may be difficult to concentrate or staying awake. So, you know, you're a bit fatigued. It's been shown that you have less uh, memory retention. So it's hard to necessarily retain things that you're learning in courses or during lectures. You may be feeling like a greater amount of stress in your life. So that could also be distracting or impede like working on homework or working on assignments. So you might be spending more time on things that would take you less time. Or even, you know, sleep has been shown to, like poor sleep has been shown to suppress your immune system. So it could also be just like coming, running, coming down with a cold because, you know, you're just like too tired and you just didn't get enough rest. But I would also like to emphasize that, you know, getting one night of good sleep before an exam may not be enough necessarily to affect your academic performance. I read one study that found that better quality and longer duration sleep were related to higher academic performance but also sleep consistency was also related to uh, great, uh, higher grades in the study. I like to also just say that, you know, I think a lot of people focus on the number of hours we sleep. The general recommended hours is like seven to nine. However, there's actually like a lot of research shows that there's actually quite a bit of variation. So for example, if you get six hours of sleep, you might be fine and, you know, you might be chipper and that's like your ideal number of time. But if I get six hours, I'm kind of just like, I don't know, in a low mood or more tired or fatigued, so I don't function well. So in terms of like prioritizing or thinking about how long you sleep, you should just kind of like see when do you naturally wake up, you know, um, and that's kind of that'll kind of give you an idea 
of what your like ideal time is or how much sleep do you need to get and wake up and feel like rested and alert. What practices can be adopted to facilitate better sleep slash wellness and better quality of life as a student? The first thing I would just say that's important is trying to maintain a consistent sleep schedule. And by consistent, I mean, I don't mean like, you know, you have to like sleep at the same time on the dot every day, but you know, within like half an hour to an hour of usually uh, when you sleep. So for example, I sleep typically between like 12, 1130 and 12, and that's usually enough time. And I usually wake up around like 730 or seven or something like that. Over time, your body will naturally get tired at certain times. So for example, I would naturally get tired around 1130. So that will actually help you go to sleep faster. Another thing I would say is, again, like, of try avoid using your electronics or phones or laptops before falling asleep. Having that light in your face can sometimes make it like a lot di- more difficult to actually like fall asleep. You may, your eyes might get a little bit tired, but you know, it's still like the bright light might, even if you turn it down, might uh, hinder yourself from falling asleep fast. So, you know, one thing I would recommend and something, something I sometimes do is if I really want to like, you know, fall asleep to like an episode or something, I'll like turn off the screen so it's black. Um, and then I'll just kind of listen to it or I'll listen to a podcast or like an audiobook, And that usually helps because then you can have both like the kind of stimulation of like listening to something as you fall asleep, but without kind of like the jarring light in your eyes. Another thing that uh, it's been generally recommended is like not to have like a huge meal or exercise right before bed. Um, I would say that if you really can't like sleep, I think like over the counter uh, medication like melatonin could be useful. Although that I will generally caution people from you turning to like melatonin or any kind of sleep aids right away. Because over time, you don't want to be really dependent on that and then not be able to fall asleep like naturally. I would say that at the end of the day, you just have to kind of commit to doing that yourself. Um, you know, there's like no magic pill or magic method that will help you get good sleep. And it usually requires a commitment to really get yourself to be on it, like stick with a schedule and you know, really kind of, and a little bit of time management where you kind of need to maybe plan ahead.